Hello, this is Mark from I Am Organic Gardening, and in this video I'm going to show you why no-till gardening works so well with living roots in the ground. So no-till gardening started with the basics. Then we started adding wood chips on top of the soil, and that helped a lot too because it kept the weeds down, and also we weren't tilling the soil and we kept moisture in it. But now it's even more improved. When we have this green living roots, a perennial roots in the ground all the time on your right hand side, and that's taking sunlight and putting carbon back in the soil. But those living roots, which is a perennial living root, you just can't use annuals. You want a full, long term, all round perennial roots to keep that soil alive and working. So I'm going to grab a sample and then we're going to go inside and I'll show you. I've captured some live images on video of the soil food web working and I'll show you that. So here's my sample. I have some perennial living roots in here. I have my clover, I have winter rye, I have annual rye grass that keeps dying back and then growing again. But it's giving a permanent living root to that soil which is going to form beautiful soil aggregates. So with that in process we're going to go down and look at the soil food web. And all this beautiful soil is working because we have the soil food web. Now with this working so well because the plants are feeding it all the time and everything is alive, we're going to focus on the nematodes, which is a great thing to have in your soil. All of them have to be in there to work, but the nematodes do two things. They will recycle nutrients. They will give your plants uh, N, P, and K and all the other minerals. Uh, sulfur, you name it, it will break it down because the nematodes will eat the bacteria and the fungi and they, when they excrete them or release them after they're dead is that they give plants available nutrients to the soil. So no tilling is beneficial but and also covering the soil with any kind of mulch, wood chips like the bacteria method, uh, hay, straw, that type of thing, even cardboard is going to be beneficial. But the most important thing is that living root that you can see. Now this is about six inches down. Now what that's doing, that's aerating the soil and giving that open spaces. So the nematodes, which I'm going to show you in a little bit, can move around. So when there's bugs in the soil and also to feed those roots nice and deep too, those nematodes are going around, swimming around in the soil, but eating at a deeper level in the soil and releasing nutrients to all the roots in here. So all these roots that are coming down in the soil gives it all this opening gap. So the more roots you have in the soil and the deeper they go, the more the nematodes can move around. This is what I ordered the other day on Amazon.com, Beneficial Nematodes. Now in the corner, we'll give you the name of it. There's all different types, but the two types that I uh, receive are these. Now these two names, they also gave me another chart, which is located here, these two, and then it tells you what it looks like and also what type of things it goes after. So you can see that the first one says this fleas plus 200 kinds of soil pests plus the other one underneath says grubs equals or N 200 plus kinds of soil pests. That's what they go after. So this is the package it came in. It came in by uh, Priority Mail and with all the information. Now I'm going to activate it or follow the instructions so I can put a sample underneath the microscope. So here we have the product. Now down here in the left hand corner says there's 10 million beneficial nematodes in this package. And I'm going to say it's about 3 inches across and 4 inches high. They tell you to keep out of direct sunlight and also uh, temperature that you should store it at. Very simple to use. They first tell you to take uh, water and depending on how much you want to use. And so we're going to see what our temperature of our water here is. But they want it between um, 59 and 68 degrees of what you're going to dump the solution into. So let's turn this on. And we have a temperature of 63 degrees. So that's good to apply the powder into. So I'm only going to take a little bit. I cut a hole in there because the rest I'm going to save for my garden. And I'm just going to apply just a small amount. 
Now they say to stir well, so I'm just going to shake it a little bit here. Kind of dissolve that solution. And then they say wait 20 to 30 seconds. And then stir again. And then you can apply it inside your watering can and play it to your garden. Also, um, you should do this right away and you should do it in the morning applying it to the garden when it's cool temperatures out. But they give you full instructions what came with the material that you bought. So let's move it around again one more time. About 20, 30 seconds went by. And then we're going to take a sample. Like so. We just need one drop. And now we're going to apply that underneath the microscope. Now we're just going to put that slide underneath the microscope and we're all set. So let's turn our microscope on. Give it a second to, oh, there they are. There's one of them. This is a nematode. Now it looks like a worm and it's very, this is only at um, 100 magnification. Now, let's move things around a little bit. So here we have another one. I just have its tail and you can tell the difference. And there's a the mouth on the, here's the mouth over here. It's hard to keep it in the screen. It's just not cooperating with me. So it's swimming around. But this is how they move around in the soil. It acts like a worm or almost like an eel, if you want to say, its movement. But you can see, now inside you can see, which is really cool, and hopefully you can see this, inside the darker material, that's all bacteria and fungi that's been eating. Because here's the mouth over here. And you can see it going here, and this is the digestive system. So when it's done with the bacteria and the fungi, and it releases them or poops it out, that's the nutrients that is available to your plant. That's what's going to give your plants nutrients. This is amazing. I love this stuff. Now, in, there's a tiny little mouth here, and this guy's cooperating really well, male or female, I don't know, um, but just fantastic. Now here's a better shot where the mouth is, and it's searching around for bacteria. Uh, I'm going to lose it. Oh, going away in the corner. I'll be right back. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Now the reason I bought this, and I get 10 million of them in a bag, it is very difficult for me to find these in my soil outside. They're there, but they should be constantly moving and feeding on bacteria. For me to capture one, if there's 10 million of that in that little bag, you can see how difficult it would be to try to capture one and getting on, uh, <laughs> on camera to show it. But this is good. I am so glad. Oh, and then by the way, this only costs like maybe 12 bucks and another maybe $12 to ship it. So it's totally worth it for me to try this. And I'm learning so much. Now, I wish I had a better, I wonder if I can magnify this one more time. Oh, I, now I brought it up to a thousand. I don't know if we're gonna be able, there. Now this is at a thousand magnification. Now you can see the inner parts of, and that's the tail. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy this. Again, this is what all the nematodes, this is the soil food web, and I'll show you the chart. This is what's going to eat all that material, the bacteria and the fungi in your soil. And like I said, when it releases it, this is plant available nutrients all the time. And this is constantly going on every second every millisecond of the day and these are supplying plants and nutrients you need now what's most important is that you have at least anywhere from 85 to 90 percent of the nutrients given to your plants are given through the soil food web to your plants this way it doesn't rely on just compost. It has to be eaten and pooped out by these guys, these nematodes and other things to give it the nutrients that your plants need. Oh, this is 
very difficult to keep there, but I'm trying my best. There we go. It, hopefully it knows it's a TV star now, or a YouTube star. It's 15 seconds of fame here. Just to show you, this line here is the edge of the, not the slide, but the little piece of glass that I put on top of the slide. So they're all swimming from the middle, getting away from the light, trying to go to the side of the glass where the water and the solution runs out. And you can see, if I can go up along this line here, there's one, there's another one. I can maybe zoom in on it. There we are. I don't know if I got 10 million here, but this is just a small thing. This is one that went out from underneath the slide. There's a couple there, and here they all are. And this is what's in the solution. So I know when I bought this, it is they are alive, and it is activated that quickly. And this, these guys are outside of the slide right now. I hopefully it doesn't go inside of my microscope. So I'm going to hopefully stop this soon. But And there's another one up on top inside the slide and right down the line here there's a couple more now this like I said they're so tiny now this is at a thousand magnification and oh here's some more outside already so I'm going to be careful I'm going to try to stop this and there they are. These are the tails. Now imagine all these working in your soil to destroy pests. And now I'll show you how they do it. Now here you can see that we have a couple of them swarming together at the edge of the slide. Now when they come in contact with the grubs here, they either, now I've been told two things and I don't know which is right, but it doesn't matter because either way it works. Now when they come across these grubs or any kind of bad larvae or insects in the soil, they have bacteria on them and a certain type of bacteria. And what that bacteria does is goes or releases a slime across the larvae or the bug. And then what it does is that it infects it and then we'll start eating the bug from the inside out. Then when the bug is dead, when the pest is dead, these will, they'll start laying eggs and then remultiply. So they're feeding all the time. So you actually need bad insects in your soil to keep these alive. These are the food source. They will also eat the bacteria and the fungi that keeps them going. But when you have a large infestation of bad bugs, these will multiply so quickly because they have a bigger food source and that will keep them going. So they're controlled. So when bad bugs come in, these eat the bad bugs, multiply very quickly and search out more bad bugs. But in the meantime, their populations are low all the time in soil because they're just feeding on the bacteria and the fungus in the soil. So they're always there and always moving. That's why you have to have a good, healthy soil with lots of pore spaces in them because these are bigger than the bacteria and the fungi in the soil. So they need those bigger pores, undisturbed, larger pores that plant roots form in the soil. And it's so important that those plant roots are there capturing sunlight and keeping that soil open and feeding the bacteria and fungi so these beautiful nematodes stay alive and then help the whole network produce healthy food for us. I want to thank you very much for watching my video today and also the nematodes thank you also. So please like and share so those nematodes can become YouTube stars. Thanks for watching. Bye.